What's going on? Vincent Rapsardi, BigBlueUnbiased.com. So the NFL draft is over. After talking about it for months and months and months, we now know exactly who the Giants have taken with all their draft picks. And the draft is such an interesting event in general because there's so much buildup. Three days, players are taken, trades are happening, and then it's like football hibernation right after. So with the fourth pick, the Giants took Andrew Thomas. And I'm not going to be someone to sit here and give you a hot take and tell you how great this pick is or how bad this pick is. I don't do that. It fills a need. This class was touted as a very good class when it comes to offensive tackles. Now, we'll see. Let them play. I'm not someone to judge um, before they play games. I'm just not going to do that. They waited. They waited on the clock looking for a trade because they understood in recent history offensive tackles are normally taken around the 10th or 11th pick prior five seasons the average draft position of the first offensive tackle taken was the 11th pick this was expected to be a better draft when it comes to offensive linemen than recent history still jedrick wills was the second offensive tackle taken with the 10th pick and that's when you know beckton and worse they started to come off the board and that's what the giants expected to happen which is why they waited to see if a trade would happen and a trade didn't happen and it is what it is you can't fault them nobody knows what was offered they went ahead and they took a player that they feel like is going to be a franchise left tackle this draft pick matched value with need i i didn't see much pushback among fans or the media a lot of people understood it but my thing is a lot of people are just expecting andrew thomas to come in and be that franchise left tackle i don't think that's fair for a rookie and not that he can't be ready maybe he is maybe he's ready to go but if he's a franchise left tackle treat him like a franchise player when daniel jones was drafted the expectation day one wasn't daniel jones needs to be an all pro rookie year and the giants go to the super bowl you ease them in action and when they're ready to truly step up and be that franchise player at that premier position that left tackle position or the quarterback position that's when you make the move and you give them that opportunity to play there i would start him at right tackle and then i would ease him over to left tackle whenever he's ready the giants are not going to be competing for a championship this year there's no need to rush him the offensive line in general is not a glamour position you usually notice when an offensive lineman uh makes mistakes with a wide receiver or a pass rusher maybe a pass rusher is not great against the run on tape or this or that if you really look into it but if they rack up seven or eight sacks it's going to be looked at as a productive year if chase young has eight or nine sacks as a rookie but really struggled against the run nobody's really going to remember that they're going to say he had eight or nine sacks and there's a lot of potential there and he had a great rookie year if a wide receiver is a rookie and he catches eight touchdown passes but he had 10 drops they're going to say but look at the touchdowns you see those big touchdown highlight reel plays he has a lot of potential if Andrew Thomas steps in, plays left tackle, and gives up two sacks, but has a nice block in a game, they're going to remember the sacks, and they're going to say, oh, look how foolish he looked on that play. It's not a glamour position, and when you make mistakes, everybody notices. The expectations are just so high right now with him. People have been talking about upgrading the Giants' offensive line for over half a decade. The expectation is going to be, Andrew Thomas needs to fix the offensive line once and for all. That's a lot to put on a rookie. Maybe he's ready to play left tackle. Maybe right, in, right away in camp, they notice he's ready. I'm just saying, take it slow and lower the expectations a little bit because I don't think it's very fair. And then people were saying like, oh, they're finally giving Daniel Jones what Eli didn't get, right? And that's offensive line protection. I get it. Like, people love Eli Manning. I totally understand it. But, like, let's state the facts here. The Giants tried to give Eli help on the offensive line and when it came to adding playmakers. Eli just wasn't a good quarterback in his last three or four years. They tried though. In 2013, they used a first round pick on Justin Pugh. In 2014, they used a second round pick on Weston Richburg. In 2015, they used a top 10 pick on Eric Flowers. Now, whether those picks worked out or those players were good, that's another story, but they tried. Who knows if these picks work out? But the Giants are trying, right? They're trying to give Daniel Jones help using a fourth overall pick on Andrew Thomas and a third round pick on Matt Pert and a fifth round pick on Chandler. They're trying, they're trying to add pieces to the offensive line. There's no guarantee it's gonna work but they're, they're doing their best. So I'll move on, another topic. Xavier McKinney, he was the Giants' second round pick, safety from Alabama, and he played, he had at least 200 snaps at deep safety, he had strong safety in the slot, so he gives the Giants um, a good amount of versatility. And now you add McKinney with Julian Love, who was able to do very similar things, play deep safety, play strong safety, play as a slot corner, very versatile player. Uh, so all of a sudden, there's a lot of pieces for Patrick Graham's defensive coordinator of the Giants. They're talking about the defense being a very multiple defense, you know, mix and match here and there, not a specific just 3-4 or 4-3 defense, kind of basically play it based on uh, situation. Dave Gettleman's talked about scheming up a pass rush. So the Giants are all about versatility here. It seems like Gettleman is building his defense very much like a modern day baseball team. There really isn't a big time player, but a lot of value players. James Bradbury, if you look at the numbers, 
A lot of the advanced metrics are in favor of James Bradbury and Blake Martinez, very efficient when it came to rushing the passer, blitzing, and being a good run stopper. His coverage uh, advanced metrics, not as good, but still can add uh, definitely a lot of value to the Giants defense. Leonard Williams, I know people do not love the low sack total, but he's a guy that had more quarterback pressures, more quarterback hits than DeForest Buckner. DeForest Buckner was just traded for a first round pick and given an $84 million extension. There's definitely value on this Giants defense and you add a player like McKinney who can do multiple things. Julian Love can do multiple things. Jabril Peppers can do multiple things. And now tendering uh, Marcus Golden, potentially getting him back for $5.2 million if no team goes ahead and signs him. That's a big time move. Last year, Marcus Golden not only had double digit sacks, but he also ranked top 10 in quarterback pressures, quarterback hits, and quarterback knockdowns. If the Giants can get Marcus Golden back for $5.2 million, that's one of the biggest steals I've seen in recent years. Everybody uses the argument that like running backs don't matter, you find them anywhere, undrafted, and that's actually not true. But nobody mentions other positions. There are other positions where good players, starting caliber players are found that are not first or second round picks, or not paid a lot of money. If you look at the last five Super Bowl winners, of those five championship teams, the starting centers on those teams, not one of them was drafted before the sixth round. There were some beat writers throwing around the term franchise center. The Giants need to use a second round pick to get their franchise center. I guess the word franchise is just being thrown around for any position at this point. You don't need to draft a center in the second round to all of a sudden have a starting quality center. I get it. People want the offensive line to be good. It's obviously an important um, unit in general. But at the end of the day, you can't use all your resources on the offensive line, money-wise, draft pick-wise. You can't use first, second round picks and a bunch of money on every single offensive line position. There are some players that just need to develop and become good players. Right now, two of the three highest cap pits on the Giants roster are Nate Solder and Kevin Zeitler. You have a top five pick in Andrew Thomas, and you have a second round pick in Will Hernandez. Those are your starters. That's a lot of high quality assets put towards one positional unit. They also didn't draft a wide receiver. They didn't take a linebacker until the sixth round. So the Marcus Golden thing changes things up if they can get him back. If no team signs him, the Giants get him back. That obviously fills their need at edge rusher. Now you got some interesting pieces. O'Shane Eximinus, I think, is going to be a very interesting starting caliber player moving forward. He played less than 50% of snaps, and the metrics will tell you that he did very well. Uh, Rashard Higgins is one guy that I think would be a great value pick. I've talked about it. He can make big plays. In Jason Garrett's offense, you need to make big plays, and I think Rashard Higgins brings that. If you look at his 2018 metrics, impressive. Big play wide receiver, a lot of potential, and would be a great value signing. So that's it. That's all I got. Vince Rapsardi, BigBlueOnBias.com. You can also follow the Big Blue and Bias podcast. It's on iTunes, Spotify, and like everywhere else. Follow me on Twitter at Vince Rapsardi. You can follow me on all those different platforms. I'd love for you to like, comment, subscribe. would really appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Again, Vince Rapsardi, BigBlueOnBias.com.